Welcome to Nordic Institute of Dental Materials and this webinar on tooth bleaching. My name is Jon Dahl. I'm a professor at the University of Oslo and CEO at NEOM, the Nordic Institute of Dental Materials. I would just uh, remind you that neither NEOM nor the presenter has any commercial interest in products mentioned in this presentation. And presented data can be found in published literature cited in the presentation. I would like to address two types of bleaching, internal bleaching, bleaching of non-vital teeth, and external bleaching, bleaching of both vital and non-vital teeth. There is some EU regulations, which also is valid in the other um, Nordic countries like Norway and Iceland. Tooth bleaching is regarded as a cosmetic treatment and the maximum content of peroxides is therefore set to 6%, which equals 16% carbamide peroxide. Such products should only be sold by dentists and bleaching must be started at the dentist's office. No bleaching on patients below the age of 18. In this webinar, I will also address some cases where you can bleach on patients that is younger if you have a dental diagnosis prior to the treatment. Why is our teeth stained? Well, it's the daily life, coffee, tea, red wine. There are also tobacco products that can stain our teeth. And by age, teeth get darker. The lower picture shows a patient that got four central incisor and lateral crowns many years ago. And at that time, the color matched the other teeth. But by time, the other teeth got darker. And that is due to differences in the dentin of the teeth. First about external tooth bleaching or called dentist administrated at home use and other commonly used terms like night guard bleaching or vital tooth bleaching. To the last term, I had to add that also non-vital teeth can be bleached this way. And the medicament that is usually used is carbamide peroxide. You fill a tray with the bleaching agent. It's sufficient that it is a grape stone large for each teeth. And if you look at the lower picture, you can see that this tray shall not cover the gingiva. It can actually end half to one millimeter below the enamel junction if necessary, because the leaching agent will diffuse apically in the tooth surface. So there will be no clear cut border between the bleached and non bleached area. What are the mechanisms behind peroxide based agents? Well, the effective agent is hydrogen peroxide, either directly or from carbamide peroxide or from sodium perborite. And when hydrogen peroxide is in contact with surfaces, it forms radicals hydrogen radicals or oxygen radicals or superoxides. And these are actually the active chemical part of the hydrogen peroxide. These free radicals split the so-called chromophore in dentin and enamel, and the result is less discoloration. The chromophores are actually large molecules that absorb lights and makes the teeth look darker. Well, in this picture, you can see that the peroxide is diffusing through enamel and into the dentin and attacks the chromophores and split them into smaller molecules that do not absorb so much light. In addition, the free radicals also oxidize aromatic acids in the phosphoproteins in dentin. These aromatic or these phosphoproteins makes the teeth more dark by time. So it is also possible to lighten a tooth that is 
without any external staining due to the attackment from the peroxides on the dentin phosphoproteins. What about the efficacy of tooth bleaching? We know that bleaching works, and we know that time is more important than concentration. And you can interrupt the bleaching procedure, bleaching a few days and then have a few days off, and bleach for a few more days. Bleaching sequence for more than two hours seems not necessary, uh, as most of the bleaching product is uh, used during these two hours of bleaching. Since concentration is not that important, you can rather choose a 10% carbamide concentration and get the same results as using a higher concentration like the 16% carbamide peroxides. There is, however, one cha challenging thing. Particolored teeth is difficult to bleach and to get a good results. As we can see in this photo, there are dark brown areas, there are white areas, and there are more natural looking teeth area. So the color here is three different colors, and it's difficult to achieve a nice, good bleaching results in these cases. What about tooth bleaching strips? Are they a useful alternative? There has been an investigation on this and a number of studies has been looked into. And the conclusion was that there was no sound evidence to support the use of the whitening strips in detriment of a 10% carbamide peroxide applied in a tray. What are the adverse effects of external tooth bleaching? This is from a study, a multi-center study that was conducted by NEOM some years ago. And approximately 50% of the patients experienced any oral symptoms during the bleaching treatment. And for 24% of the patients, these adverse effects were so severe that they interrupted or terminated the treatment. Hypersensitivity, and gum erosion was the two most found adverse effects after external tooth bleaching. Other studies have shown between 15 and 65% of the patients have hypersensitivity reactions during or after tooth bleaching. Normally, it lasts for a day or two. And it's important to see that patients with earlier episodes of tooth sensitivity and patients with retracted gingiva is at risk. One person reported sensitivity symptoms consisting of pins and needle sensation, and it could last for a very long time. And be aware of patients that have retracted gingiva. Many of those actually would like us to bleach the more yellowish areas here, that is due to the dentin that is exhibited but take care, do not bleach on dentin. Soft tissue damage is seen in studies by 35, 25 to 30% of the patients. This can easily be handled. There are two reasons for this soft tissue damage, as you can see on the picture here to the left. There are erosions, there is no bleeding, but there is erosion, erosions. The epithelium is destroyed and this bleeding, there is no bleeding as hydrogen peroxide has a hemostatic effect. But improper adjustment of the tray, the tray shall not cover the gingiva as it is in this picture. And the other thing is to inform the patients of not overfilling the tray. Too much is not too good when it comes to tooth bleaching. This is a case of internal tooth bleaching, root field teeth that get darker by time, and you need to do something about it. In this case, it was opened up for both the lateral and the central incisor. It was filled with a bleaching agent. I will come back to that in the next slide. And the result was quite satisfactory. Some tips in this case. It is important to seal off the root filling. You can use a glass ionomer material 
or a zinc oxide material. So there will be no penetration of hydrogen peroxide through or along the root filling. Another thing to take into consideration is that you should not remove the stain dentin. It is the chemicals that shall remove the staining and you shall leave as much dentin as possible. So just remove the filling, seal off and let the chemistry do the rest. As we can see at the lower picture, this is no good. You can actually see through the enamel too much of the dentin has been removed. There has been some discussions regarding whether internal tooth bleaching is regarded as a dental treatment or a cosmetic treatment. And it is the Norwegian Medicines Agency that regulates medical devices. And they have concluded that all tooth bleaching agents are regarded as, as cosmetics with a limited concentration of 6% hydrogen peroxide. This 6% is actually too low to achieve a good internal tooth bleaching. In some countries, I think there are still possible to buy specific products intended for internal tooth bleaching. But in Norway, these products are taken off the market. So for my Norwegian colleagues, you had to buy sodium perborate from a pharmacy and you had to make a prescription as I have put on the bottom of this slide in Norwegian. And then this mixture of sodium perborate and water is placed into the cavity to obtain the internal tooth bleaching. What are the most adverse effects that you can observe after internal tooth bleaching? That is the cervical root resorption. And many studies has looked into this aspect and found incidences between zero and 13%. Some risk factors has been identified. Improper cervical sealing. As I mentioned earlier, it is important to seal off the root filling. Heating of the bleaching agent was done previously but I think that's not in the normal, prescript, normal um, methodology for internal bleaching any longer. Teeth with a history of trauma and or orthodontic treatment is also at risk. This is a case taken from the literature where we can see this access to this area here where there's a root resorption due to inflammation in the root area here attachment for the root and this tooth was extracted and we can see there is a lot of cavity here where the tooth has been eaten by macrophages from this inflammation but the low incidence of cervical root resorption should not prevent you from doing an internal tooth bleaching it's a very well acceptable treatment should everything go wrong there is a possibility of placing an implant. As I mentioned in the beginning of my talk, tooth bleaching is regarded a cosmetic treatment. However, in some cases, I would rather regard it as a dental treatment. For example, a young patient with one dark teeth due to trauma or endodontic treatment in those cases, I would say that bleaching on a person younger than 18 years of age is acceptable. However, you had to make a proper diagnosis prior to the treatment. Thank you for listening. I hope you got some advice for internal and external tooth bleaching.